This lesson is on the quadratic formula and the discriminant. I started by writing the quadratic formula up here at the top. x is going to equal negative b plus or minus the square root of our discriminant, that's this piece here in the middle, all of that over 2a. So when you start using the quadratic formula, you first want to identify what a, b, and c are. Remember it's ax squared plus bx plus c in this form. So a here is 1, when you don't see that number there's an invisible 1 there. b is the number, the coefficient in front of x, which would be 16, and c is the constant, so that would be 60. So we're going to put that in the quadratic formula up here at the top. So x is going to equal negative the value of b, so 16, plus or minus the square root of b squared, so we're going to do 16 squared, minus 4 times the a, which is 1, times the c here, which is 60, and then all of that will be divided by 2 times a, which is 1 here. So now we start to clean this up. So we have negative 16 plus or minus, we're going to go ahead and put the square root. We're going to do 16 squared, which is 256, and then we're going to do negative 4 times 1, which is negative 4, times 60, which is negative 240, all of that over 2 times 1, which is 2. We clean it up some more. We're going to work with that discriminant on the inside. So we have negative 16 plus or minus the square root of 256 minus 240 is 16 divided by 2. So we're going to keep going. So now negative 16 is going to be, oops, let me make that. Negative 16 is plus or minus. The square root of 16 is 4, all that divided by 2. Really, at this point, we're going to go ahead and split this into two separate problems here with our plus and our minus. The first one we're going to have is going to be that we have negative 16 plus 4 divided by 2. And the second one that we're going to have is the negative 16, oh, there I did it again. <laughs> negative 16, we're going to do minus that 4 divided by 2. So negative 16 plus 4 would be negative 12 divided by 2. Negative 16 minus 4 would be negative 20 divided by 2. And then this would be negative 12 divided by 2 is negative 6. Negative 20 divided by 2 is negative 10. So that means here that x equals both of these values. We'll do another example with the quadratic formula. So we need x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, all of that divided by 2 times a. And so now we want to first start again finding our a, b, and c. a is the number in front of x squared, which is 1. b is the number in front of x, which is 8. c is the number here that's the constant, 17. So we have x equals negative the value of b, so negative 8 plus or minus the square root of, let's go ahead and do 8 in here and do the square, 8 squared is 64, minus 4 times a, which is 1, times c, which is 17, we'll figure out what that is in just a second, and then all of that over 2 times 1, which would be 2. And so we're going to work with the discriminant again, so negative 8 plus or minus the square root of, we have 64 minus, and then we want to do 4 times 17, and we're going to get minus 68, all that over 2. So we keep it going. Negative 8 plus or minus the square root of 64 minus 68 is negative 4, all that divided by 2. Keep it going. Negative 8 plus or minus the square root of a negative is an i, and the square root of 4 is 2, so this makes 2i, all that divided by 2. Now we're ready to break this into two problems. Negative 8 plus 2i divided by 2, as well as negative 8 minus 2i divided by 2. Now we're going to go ahead and break this off because this is a monomial on the bottom. So that really means negative 8 divided by 2 plus 2i divided by 2, comma, this one would be negative 8 divided by 2 minus 2i divided by 2, and now we just clean it up. Negative 8 divided by 2 is negative 4, and then 2i divided by 2 is just i, comma. Negative 8 divided by 2 is negative 4, and negative 2 divided by 2 is negative i. Oh, I didn't mean to put a comma there. So the two answers here 
our x equals negative 4 plus i and negative 4 minus i. Now in terms of the discriminant, the discriminant is b squared minus 4ac. So let's look at what this does when we solve each of these problems here. So in this problem, a is 1, b is negative 5, and c is 10. So we're going to plug it into our discriminant formula here. So we take b squared, so that would be negative 5 squared, that means negative 5 times itself, which will make that positive, minus 4 times a, which is 1, times c, which is 10. So negative 5 times negative 5 is 25 minus, this would be 40. And so when we subtract these, we're going to get that the answer is negative 15. Now here's the thing, if you get a negative answer for your discriminant, you will have two imaginary solutions. That means they're not real. What does that mean in terms of the graph? That means somewhere, wherever the graph is, it means that it's above the x-axis, whether it's here or here, it means it never crosses the x-axis. So we have two complex solutions. Now let's try it with this one. So a equals, in this one, 4, b equals 3, and c equals negative 2. So we want to plug in our b squared, so b squared is b times itself, so 3 squared minus 4 times the a here, which is 4, times the c, which is negative 2. And so now 3 times itself is 9, and then we have negative 4 times 4 is negative 16. Negative 16 times negative 2 is positive 32, so that means our discriminant here is going to be 41, and that is a positive answer. So with the negative answer, we got two imaginary solutions. With the positive answer, that means we have two real solutions. What does that mean? Well, that means on a graph that our parabola can cross the x-axis in two places, whether it's here or here. As long as it's got two places where it crosses the x-axis, those would be the two x values. All right, let's look at the final example here. A is 1, B is 4, and C is 4. So we're going to go ahead and do our B squared. So that's B squared minus 4 times A times C. So that's 16 minus 16 equals 0. Well, what does it mean when the discriminant is equal to a 0? Well, that means that there's just one real solution. Why? Well, if we look at it graphically, it means that our parabola, in some respect, is just sitting on the x-axis. So it's here or here. Or maybe it's upside down, but it's only crossing the x-axis at one place. The vertex is on the x-axis. So let's review. If the discriminant is negative, it means that the graph is essentially in the air and it's two imaginary solutions. If the discriminant is a positive number, that means it crosses the x-axis in two places, so there are two real solutions. And if the discriminant is zero, that means it crosses the x-axis at only one place, which makes it one real solution.